Friends, here we are at the end of 1 Thessalonians. Uh, we've seen Paul's passion for these new disciples in Thessalonica, uh, friends that he's made as, who he's eager to visit again, a group of people who uh, have obviously learned from Paul uh, what it means to love their brothers and sisters and to support one another and to build one another up. Um, he leads by example, encouraging them and they're encouraging each other. Uh, you can see the influence that he has there and the gift that Paul's given them of God's uh, message of good news. Uh, but here, when we get to chapter 5, we can see they're, they're concerned. Uh, they're maybe under the impression that Jesus was going to come back imminently, like right now. Uh, and maybe they're confused or whatever it was. They're, they're worried because they have uh, fellow believers who have died. And it's possible, just like today, that people are uh, tantalized by these by some wild prophecies of, of what it looked like when Jesus was going to come back. Uh, we can see this today, right? Like it's 2020 and, and the year has all this grief and this worldwide pandemic and everything's falling apart, it seems like. And, and all of it kind of looks like it's pointing to some sign that the end is near. But Paul earnestly corrects them and us. He says, you know very well that the Lord will come like a thief in the night. This is a good correction. It's important for us to hear it. But he doesn't just leave uh, them or us there. He reminds them, he says, you are children of the light. Live like children of the light. Listen, maybe Jesus comes tomorrow. Maybe he comes the next day. Maybe he comes in a thousand years. But in the meantime, live like people who are awake, people who have hope, people who have faith and love. And go and share that and build each other up. You know, he goes in to conclude this letter with some final words that, that kind of bring, bring even more uh, light to that. He says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. And as, as a footnote says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. To give thanks in all circumstances. And he goes on to say, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't despise the words of prophets. Test everything and hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. This is so good. And, and listen, we have so much to rejoice in. We can rejoice always because we follow Jesus who has brought real, actual life to the world. And then we can pray always because there's enough, you know it, that there's enough to pray for. Uh, and he says, pray not like, pray without ceasing. Not just like nonstop, but pray unrelenting. Pray like with persistence, seeking what God has for the world. Pray with intercession for like the oppressed that are here. And pray always, you know? And then he says, be thankful in all circumstances. Are you thankful today? Like even with this virus, even with the mess of school schedules and businesses being closed and isolation and civil unrest and division everywhere. He says, he says be thankful. In all this, we can rejoice, we can pray without ceasing, and we can give thanks always. And he goes on to talk about, about prophets and not despising their words. And, and listen, God speaks to us through his people. And we're called to test what we're hearing. We're called to listen to the Holy Spirit. And then when we hear a good word, we're called to hold fast to that. And there's probably a lot more that's, that's in there that I'm not going to get into right now. But, but let's end with this. How... How can we live this way? How can we have this faith and love and hope and salvation? It's because of what Paul says in verse 24. He says, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. It's such a straightforward, simple word, but it's so good. The, the last lines that are in there, it says, this is like the close to the end of the verse, verse 23 through 24. He says, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and complete and blameless, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Sisters and brothers, these are good words. That is a good message for us to be encouraged today and then for us to go out and being, be encouraging to the, those around you. Listen, because the Lord is faithful. Our Lord is faithful. Amen.